some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Calvez is a story, all right. A soldier in the Spanish army when he was 16. That Spaniard's been helping us fight the British by supplying us weapons, gunpowder, clothes, and money. He sure caught the attention of the English down south. Each English soldier Galvez keeps busy down here is one less for General Washington to fight up there. Answer the door. Yes. Sarah. Is she? Yes, my lady. Asleep. This is the right place, then. Yes, this is her home. I'm her mother, Lady Phillips. Terribly worried. I'm here, Mother. I'm here. You found Father's letter? He's changed, hasn't he, Sarah? Yes, Mother, he has. He's got whiskers. <laughs> yes, so he wrote. He also proposes, if you and I agree, to reunite the family in America after the war. I know. How do you feel about the idea? Father certainly thinks we can make a go of it, but it would depend on how you feel. I write from the banks of the Ohio River, where our distinguished soldier of the western frontier, Colonel Clark, is building a fort at Louisville. The colonel is about to send a mission to request more aid from Governor Bernardo de Galvez of Spanish Louisiana. Hmm. Sorry, James. Come. We're getting our marching orders from Colonel Clark. From here to New Orleans, then pass that to Mobile. It looks like a long way. And it is. Farther than you can imagine. You sure you and Henri are up to it? For the story on Governor Galvez, sir, we'll go as far as we have to. Farther, even. Galvez is a story, all right. A soldier in the Spanish army when he was 16. He was promoted quickly and soon commanded the troops to fight the Apaches in the Spanish territories. Adelante! Not only did he win, but he was so gracious to his Apache captives that when word of his compassion spread among the tribes, it almost stopped the fighting. That Spaniard's been helping us fight the British by supplying us weapons, clothes, gunpowder, and money. Then, when Spain declared war last June, he captured three British positions on the Mississippi. He sure caught the attention of the English down south. And I want to continue doing that up here. The problem is, it takes weapons. But you have weapons. Not enough, James. Never enough. He's right. And what we really need is money. But don't you have... This? Hmm. <gasps> but... But... Counterfeit. The 
British print them by the ton. Almost no one will accept colonial currency anymore. Which is why Lieutenant Cross is going to Mobile. Galvez has powder. He has arms. He has money. Just let me gather myself for a moment. Who's this bill from? John Paul Jones, sir. He says it's urgent. Since the good ship Bonhomme Richard went down, everything with Captain Jones is urgent. Let's have it. At least this one looks fairly reasonable. <laughs> he wants a copper bottom for his new ship, the Alliance. I'm surprised he doesn't want to plate the ship in gold. <laughs> My dear Jones, by all means, continue your repairs. But for goodness sake, don't bankrupt me. Yours, etc. That ought to hold him. For now. It feels odd to be out of uniform. Better to feel odd than to be caught by the British. Here's the list of what's required. Hand it to Galvez, and Galvez only. And guard it well. It's in plain English. No time to put it in code. Yes, sir. Henri? He's playing around in the woods. Henri! Come on, they're waiting for us. Henri? James, you'll never guess what I found! <gasps> My fellow members of the House of Commons, our monarch, George III, whose reign began in such shining circumstances, has seen his hereditary provinces of America erected into an empire that disclaims all connection with him. How sadly is the scene reversed. This is blasphemy. I dare say he makes a point. Not only have his American colonies turned into rebels who dispute their connection with the Empire, but he is losing favor in the eyes of his own subjects. The nerve! The nerve of the man to speak of our king that way! For Charles Fox, for any Whig to speak of the king in such a manner. I agree with him. We've gone quite a long way down what seems to be the wrong road. Fresh gingerbread, me lady. But we cannot afford to lose the colonies. Can we afford to keep them? This war will surely bankrupt the kingdom. Oh! And if we do not win, there'll be no kingdom. Now even the Irish cry for independence, Lady Phillips. I'm surprised by your air of defeatism. But sir, I hardly think you can condemn someone as defeatist when the war is already lost. <gasps> With all due respect, of course. Hmm. The fighting may continue, but for Britain, America is lost. We've been on this river. Twenty, I guess. I sort of lost count. I'm tired. You haven't slept for weeks, and the food is terrible. But the land, Henri, isn't it beautiful out here? Yes, but there's way too much of it. <laughs> What's the matter, Henri? Afraid we'll never reach Galvez? Ah, not so many weevils today. Eat hearty, lads. This night marks the hardest part of the trip. Why? Are we sleeping on rocks again? Usually we travel during the day, pull ashore at night, but tonight there's no moon, so we move. Is that safe? Safer than trying to get past the strong point at Chickasaw Bluffs in broad daylight. The Redcoats check anybody they see on the river. We're not carrying anything suspicious. I mean, except for your secret letter asking Galvez for money and gunpowder and guns. Yes, like many things in war, this is a deed best done in darkness.
Has something happened, Mother? Sir Henry Clinton. He's lost nine transport ships on the way to Charleston. All those poor boys. Boys who will not be forced to fight other poor boys. Sarah, I can't imagine what things you've seen. And you shouldn't try. Clinton's ships, where did they sail from? New York, I should imagine. Why? I was just wondering if ships were still sailing from here to America. In idle thought, that's all. close by the east bank. All this just to meet the great Calves? Stay down. find the letter from Colonel Clark to Governor Galvez asking for more aid. Oh no! Lieutenant Cross is being questioned right now! Don't worry. Lieutenant Cross hit it in the floor of the barge right after we fished you out of the water. You'll get us out of this. And you were taking these two? A trading post, just north of Natchez. Loyalists, sir. To a man. We couldn't take our goods north. No, sir. Too many rebels. And rebels have no money to buy. Well, sir, I will take your goods. Sure. Let's make a fair price. You misunderstand. I said take, not buy. But... Do you intend to stay? Because if so, perhaps we should discuss what you know of the many rebels upriver. That won't be necessary. We'll take our leave, sir. Thanks to you and your men for coming to our aid. Henri, can you walk? If I have to, I can run! You don't have to run, but we are getting out of here. Now. That guard, he found the letter to Galvez. He's opening it. Does he put everybody in jail, or just the one whose letter it is? Boy, I'm really glad you found that. It's a letter to my mother, kind of personal. Just a moment. I'm supposed to look things over. Everything. Right. Off with you then. What just happened here? He couldn't read the letter. Not a word. How do you know? He was holding it upside down, like Henri used to do. Liar! I never did! Well, maybe sometimes. This is it. 
London to New York shipping agents. After almost two months, we finally caught up to Governor Galvez in Mobile. Lieutenant Cross has gone to see Oliver Pollock, Virginia's agent here, to arrange a meeting with him. Hmm. It looks like we missed all the action. Governor Galvez, this is the young journalist I was telling you about. Not me, James! I was just kidding. Welcome, Senor Hiller. And you must be Henri, the one who fell in the water. I can't help but notice the diverse makeup of your army. Are these all your men? Come, work with me. I have professional soldiers, regular thrown from regiments in Spain, Mallorca, and Havana. The Cubans have not forgotten the English occupation in Havana. I have fleet blacks and mulattoes, local militia, men, and even American volunteers. The local militia fight for their homes. Others, like the Indians, fight because they hate the English for giving weapons to their enemies. Sounds like the British made a lot of enemies. Fortunately, you're fighting for us. Make no mistake, amigo. I hope soon you'll have your America, but what I do, I do for my king and mother Spain. No one else. At last, Teniente, I can turn my attention to your request. With this signature, anything you require will be supplied. Thanks. Uh, where are you going after you take Mobile, Governor? <laughs> as far as the British will let me push them. East to Pensacola, into the sea perhaps. Look at it this way. Each English soldier Galvez keeps busy down here is one less for General Washington to fight up there. Mm-hmm. Those will be much more impressive in a few weeks when they bloom. Spring. A new beginning. There's something new beginning, Mother, but it's not in England. Sarah. Here, we go by the old rules of class and custom. Most of our people simply can't be heard. Nonsense. You heard Charles Fox yourself in Parliament. I heard him, and Chatham and Burke, and Rockingham before him. And nothing has changed. We both know it. And your America will be different? They say it will be. I hope it will be. My dear, after the war, we'll join your father there. But for now... I can't wait. I've realized I'm part of this revolution. A small part, but I have to be there to see it to the end. That's why you went to Mr. Bentley, the shipping agent. You... you knew? Of course I knew, Sarah. I'm your mother. What am I to do? I suppose you should pack. Your ship leaves Portsmouth on Friday. Oh! Fuego! The English commander of Fort Charlotte was stubborn, but he was no fool. He knew Relief wasn't going to get there in time. He defended his position against Galvez's superior force. To keep fighting would have been a waste of time and men. It's off to New Orleans. We'll load our supplies and head up river to meet Colonel Clark. Doesn't it take longer to go upstream? Surely. We could mount a small sail. There's a lot of poling, rowing, rope toes from shore. How long? Four months. <gasps> Four? <laughs> I knew you'd feel that way. So I asked Governor Galvez to put you on a boat to Havana. You'll get a merchantman there and be in Philadelphia in a couple of weeks. Henri! Henri! Did you hear that? We're... Henri?
to worry, ladies. A month chained below decks, all the fight out of them. They're Americans? They are. Another lot of bodies for Fulton Prison. Keep moving! We offered them a chance to join the Royal Navy. Instead, they chose the cells. What were they thinking? Of loyalty, perhaps. Patriotism. Huh? Best come away, miss. Courage. Mother, there's something I must tell you. What, dear? I feel I'm an American, too.